Speaking of veterans, Tim Garino, pastor from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Good morning, sir. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us on here today. Yeah, Tim, what was your military career like? Uh, well, I was a young man, 17, went in, um, got off the streets. It was uh, the best decision, probably for me, not for everybody, but for me, it was the best decision. Otherwise, uh, I'd have probably ended up in a lot of bad places. Got to travel a lot, uh, grew up, uh, taught a lot of responsibilities. I did things in the, in the Navy that I would never done in civilian life, uh, worked with all kinds of equipment, went all kinds of places, uh, got to meet some wonderful p people, got to see many different cultures, uh, do many different things. Um, it's kind of almost like uh, um, I was uh, an observer mm -hmm. going, going through career. Um, did four years, um, got to go to some special places, <laughs> uh, Guantanamo Bay, um, Diego Garcia, places like that that um, people, uh, not many people have been to. <laughs> Diego Garcia, when I was there, it was just the sea bees and uh, um, big turtles we would race. And then around them, Diego Garcia, I mean, uh, was um, a lot of the white sharks, the big, the big massive sharks. So, but we could do things back then that you couldn't do now, like we could... Um, shoot them, you know, do stuff to them. Or if you did them now, you'd be in a lot of you trouble. You did it from a boat. Maybe. You, know, my home, you didn't swim with those. I know we didn't swim with them. I mean, there's yeah. just things you could do back then that yeah. if you did now, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Bill, did uh, you do some ocean shooting while you were out on the, on the range? I did not, but you've heard about my great white shark story. I'll not tell yeah. it now. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Yeah. They can yeah. be very, very, very aggressive. Very oh, deadly, yeah. So. yeah. We, especially when you hang the, the bloody chickens over yeah, the side. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you had some fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things, you know, we used to do, yeah, things. It's just, it was really good. It was good for me. I got out. Um, they actually sent me to college while I was in. Uh, I was going pre-law at Old Dominion University, and I was doing very well. And uh, some things changed in my life, and I chose a different direction. I chose to become a minister um, and uh, turned down the a lot of other things and I became a minister and uh, went to college and had some good people uh, mentor me while I was in the service and take care of me look out for me because I was pretty stupid and did some dumb things and they uh, took care of me so I thank God for the the military and uh, I have friends to this day go way back um, you asked me one one time I had that gentleman on that was a Navy SEAL and he asked me how did I, I, I have some people from way back when um, so it, it, it's, uh, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. Got to travel a lot. And pretty much why I do what I do, because when I got out, I got out during the Vietnam, uh, post-Vietnam. I got out in 83, and there wasn't a lot for veterans. Uh, they didn't treat us well. I saw what they were doing to the Vietnam vets, and I got into rescue mission work because the rescue missions were the only ones reaching out to the Vietnam veterans because the VA at the time was not doing anything for the Vietnam veterans. A lot of them were struggling with drugs, alcohol, homelessness. Their, their rate was sky high. <clears throat> I got involved in the rescue missions be pretty much because of that. Mm -hmm. And I've been involved in rescue missions ever since. Reministering uh, the rescue mission here in Martinsburg, we have over 70% of the men there are veterans. So uh, we have a big outreach there. But I brought Richard with me this morning, and Richard's been with us. He's our food service manager. He's come up through the program. He's come up through the ranks. He's been with us a couple times now, and now he's been with us a much longer time. He's clean and sober, doing very well compared to what he did the first two times when he came and visited us, but he can share his story. Very good. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, What's your story? Where did you grow up? I'm from uh, Tennessee, mm -hmm. so I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, Bill, how close is that to where you grew up? Other than the state. Other than yes. the state. Yeah. <laughs> so where are you from? Uh, near Jackson, Tennessee, okay. Western yeah, I know Park. Where that's yeah. At. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm from Chattanooga. I grew up with a really good family. Uh, me and my father had some issues, um, but other than that, like I had great grandparents and really good family structure, Christian environment. Um, so uh, how'd you wind up in Martinsburg? Uh, well, I came to uh, to Charlestown in 2019, working construction. I I got into I operated heavy equipment most of my life so i had a friend that owned a house um, in charlestown and he brought me up mm -hmm. to do some work on his house so that's originally why i came up here um what led me to that you know kind of like i've i've had a 
traumatic life experiences like I've lost um, literally everybody in my family is deceased uh, I have a living sister and she has two two sons and that's pretty much the only family I got everybody else pretty much died from 2006 to 2015 including um, my fiance at the time on Valentine's Day she, oh she uh, overdosed, overdosed and died in 2015 um, so that led me down a path of uh, anger and you know um i had a lot of hostility towards god and uh just went down the wrong path i was still i was like a you know i got caught up in addiction but i was a i was a functioning addict i was always able to work and and stuff like that so i was you know way addicted when i came to charlestown in 2019 what was your drug of choice um you know a little bit of everything like i you know mainly marijuana but um i had you know a long a long stint with meth and also uh opioids mm -hmm. fentanyl did, w did, were there any um uh, behaviors associated with the addiction when you were when you were drunk or high or, or whatever did you do certain things that you wouldn't otherwise do absolutely yeah yeah i was um i was not the same person that i am now um even you know especially with with the fentanyl and the opioids like you once you get on that you can't you can't not have it you think anyway um but yeah you get really like terribly sick if you if you um if you go without it and so you know i, I ended up getting in trouble in what led me to the mission this time um i came to the mission when i told y'all about the story where I got shot earlier. Uh, so I, I came to Yes, no, you told us off air, but there's an audience that just went, what? Yeah, so I got like a... Uh, so what happened? You know, I got, got a, what can you discuss about being shot? Well, I, I got shot by by an ex-girlfriend. Um, Was she ex before the shooting or during? No, or? We, we, <laughs> the shooting pretty much ended the relationship. <laughs> they, uh, they tend to do that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I egged her on. Like, I wasn't um, aggressive to her or violent to her or nothing, but, like, I was definitely very verbal and didn't want her to be anywhere close to me at the time. And we were we were both drinking, and we were at a, a party on the river. The funny thing about it is right there at the river um, where I got shot, uh, a year and a half later, Pastor Tim baptized me oh. in, in, that, in that same spot on the river. So uh, a little bit of redemption there, you know what I'm saying? But... Uh, and going back to the shooting, you said she was aiming at your face and hit your foot <laughs> yeah, after she, shooting three times. Yeah, she, she shot three three times, and I heard the first two go by me. You know, uh, pretty much like swoop, swoop, and then Jeez. and then it felt like Jose Canseco hit me with a home run swing in the foot and uh, spun me around and and immediately turned into a crying baby because it hurt really bad. So did people subdue her at that point? Uh, she left. She left. <laughs> Oh, yeah. my goodness. And legally, <laughs> my understanding is when you go to the hospital, and I think you would win, you have to report a gunshot wound. It's not well, something I, you I went just... to the hospital under arrest because because when the cops showed up, I wouldn't tell them who shot me. And because I was trying to protect, I knew it was going to be really bad. And um, so I wouldn't cooperate with them. And so they, they in, in effect, went ahead and charged me with um, a domestic so you have you have a domestic record right now? Even though actually, I think I got that beat in court. It di it dismissed, but I did have a pending charge. Yeah. So if you don't report the person who does violence against you, you get charged. Something the like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting quirk <laughs> yeah. in the law. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't too cooperative either. You know what I mean? Like I was in shock and I was also intoxicated. So like I'm, you know, not saying I'm entirely innocent, but yeah, like I was not 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 nice to the police. So, so. in those Western movies, when they're <laughs> when they're treating someone who's been shot, they always tell them here, well, they're gonna dig the bullet out, take this shot of whiskey. Are you telling me that alcohol doesn't help in <laughs> well, numbing the pain of a gunshot? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it didn't help any. Yeah. <laughs> so how's the, how's your foot now? It. Uh, it's fine. Like uh, miraculously, it didn't hit a bone. It just went straight through, like the meat part, and uh, didn't hit a bone in the arch. It went like the arch of my foot. It went straight underneath everything. Wow, very sensitive area there. So it hurt um, sure. a lot. But they're yeah, making a country just, song about it. Uh, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, and, and Rob, there's a difference between take a shot of whiskey and taking a bottle of whiskey. I yeah. would go with a bottle. <laughs> go with the whole bottle. Yeah. So you show up at Pastor Tim's with a hole in your foot and a commitment to stop this? Yeah, and, and that was the first time. Um, I, I left. I got, I got good and went through their program and 
got good and got an outside job and then I actually got the same job that I had made the mistake of going back to the same job that I had before um, because it was good money and it was what I've done my whole life so I ended up traveling back to Tennessee and doing some work um, and then ended up coming back to the same house in Charlestown uh, still working with the same company um, so and why yeah. was that a mistake well it ended up being a mistake because because I didn't really um, surrender my life over to what I needed to do I thought you know I got a couple of paychecks under me like a lot of guys that, at the mission they do they get they get a job they get a couple of paychecks and then and then they think they're good and they're ready to leave well I experienced that firsthand so like that's you know something that I like to try to um, to lead these guys in the right direction and let them know it takes a lot more than a couple of paychecks to, to start all over, you know, and that's what essentially what we're doing is starting all over. We don't have a vehicle, a house, anything. So you're starting from scrap. So you can't do it with like, you know, two or $3,000 or something like that. It takes a lot more. So you gotta, you gotta sit down and, and, you know, go through our program and, and do what they're doing. They're telling you to do save 70% of your check every week and save and save and save and probably going to take a year or so to get that enough money underneath you where you can comfortably leave there, you know? Plus the longer you're sober, see that people think, well, 90 days, 28 days, I'm fine. Uh, you know, I'm right. clean and I'm going to go back out and get that paycheck. And then they go, like he said, he went back to the same crowd, to the same job, to the same people, the same atmosphere mm -hmm. that got him in trouble in the first place. <laughs> you know, in AA, they teach you people, places, and things. You have to change those things. You have to change those areas. You have to change those people, places, and things. If you don't, the chances of uh, backsliding is is real strong. So that's when he said he made the mistake. He went back to the same people, back to the mm -hmm. same job, uh, same atmosphere. Everything's okay. You know, let's party afterwards. Let's do. You know, so uh, that's. And I was covering a lot of pain. Like I started the story off with, uh, I've experienced a lot of loss. You know, like my family's deceased. My mother, dad, grandparents, uh, my mom, my my, my fiance. They are all deceased. Um, and so I experienced a lot of pain, and I didn't deal with that. I didn't. I didn't. You know, the only way I ever dealt with it was, you know, using drugs or, or just making the pain go away. So um, something, since I came in June 2nd, 2023 is when I came back to the mission. And uh, ever since then, I've been clean and sober, and I've been on a spiritual journey that has just been amazing. I've met people that I can't even, um, that I've cl I got more family than I ever had before now. And it's it's weird to say that, but like... I've met some incredible people. This community in Martinsburg lives with open hands. I've watched, you know, uh, being at, being the kitchen manager, I deal with a lot of, like, the, the volunteers and then a lot of the, you know, the, the things that are coming into the mission as donations, whether they're in the kitchen or not, they usually come through our door. And so uh, I deal with a lot of people that live open-handedly. And, I, you know, I get to pray before the meals and stuff in front of the crowd that comes and eats. And I like to say a lot, like, um, Jesus is still working miracles um, today because, like, every day, he, you know, he produces all this food that we that we cook and we serve the community, and it comes out of thin air. Like, we don't pay a dollar for it. Um, it's, it's all donated. And from just, like, you know, experiencing that and, and, and completely owning myself and owning, like, you know, my past and everything that I've, this time, like I've I've done what they said. I've I've have done the savings thing. Um, I'm employed at the mission now, but like I've done the savings thing, and I you're paying off your fines. Took care of every fine that I've ever owed. I paid it off. Everybody that I ever owed a dollar, I no longer owe anyone. And so, that did. And then I had to get like my teeth fixed and stuff like that in the first year, and that. You know, it hit me in a pocketbook, but, like, now I'm back to where I'm past all that, got it all paid off, and, and now I'm starting to save again. So. Richard Berger is our guest here on the program, by the way, from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission with Pastor Tim Garino. So when you're there and people are coming into the mission for the first time and they have all the answers already, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is something that you do. Do you have any words of wisdom for them, or do you just remain quiet and go, they'll figure it out in their own time, or they won't? Uh, it's situational. It just depends on who they are. Like I, you know, like I get the opportunity to share with them as a crowd, mm -hmm. and then I, you know, certain ones I work with one on one. Uh, I take time to like, you know, 
invest invest into them but a lot of times it's hard because they, you get let down a lot you know it's like so it is you got to be kind of picky and um pick and choose yeah so not yeah. not every one of them do i invest in but like yeah there are some yeah do you have do you have a sense of who you can tell your story to in an old land versus some where you know they're just not ready to hear it yeah yeah i mean i i think uh you know god just kind of opens those doors up like mm -hmm. i don't just like walk around wanting to share my story with anybody and everybody is pretty uh it's it's not a, it's not like a, a story to be glorified or anything but um but yeah there there's definitely like a, a light at the end of the tunnel like it's you know it's and i'm just now getting to that point and that's what i think pastor tim sees in me and and i'm so grateful for him you know giving me the chance to get to that point but like for the next year, um, the next twelve months, I'm, I'm, I got one day a week or one day a month in the chapel to where I get to to you know, actually preach in the chapel. So mm -hmm. I've, I've, you know, that's I think that's something I've had a calling in my life for a long time, but I ran from it, and um, so now I'm getting a chance to answer that calling. So yeah, I think it's you know I do like. I go to a couple like prayer groups, connect groups, small groups, and stuff like that, and those people know me personally. But like, a, you know, I think you'd have to like sit down with me for a second to get to know my story. Richard, you're in charge of the kitchen, and you've been there for about a year and a year and a half, yeah. and you expect another year or so. Yeah. Uh, I guess the question that actually, Pastor Tim, is there a limit of when folks like Richard would stay employed? Uh, with a mission, and you then they go off on their own. You encourage them to go off on their own, so you can bring somebody else in. Uh, it just depends on their on yeah. their recovery path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really no limit. We've had people come, and then they say it's time for them to go, and then we. Mm -hmm. It's like Richard, the uh, the guy before him is doing real well, <clears throat> um, and he's doing real well. So it, it it with Richard's timing because with each person. Um, they're on a different path um, whenever they have to still work out, whether it's legal or they need more time of sobriety. Because um, uh, the longer they stay clean and sober, uh, the chance, the success rate of staying successful when they go leave, it goes up higher. You know, um, a lot of these programs, even with us, when people come with us for 30 days because they're mandated by the court or something for 30 days, after 30 days, they're out the door. And they're using within a couple of days. Yeah, I, I really, <clears throat> I'm thinking about the other individuals, individuals such as Richard, yeah. that work with you, do a great job. But I would assume that that would be a comfort level, and it's kind of hard to break loose from the comfort level after. We we shake the comfort yeah. level. Okay. Yeah, our, our job is to monitor that as it goes along, and we shake the comfort level. Mm -hmm. um, and we have done that with certain people. We tell them it's time to move on now. You got 30 days to find a job, yeah. and they do. They yeah. find a job quickly. Yeah. Um, a lot of our guys get employed. Richard will tell you that they get employed fast. In fact, mm -hmm. Richard sees that in the kitchen. People will come and they do real well, and boom, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Man, that guy was good. You took him from him. <laughs> no, we didn't take him from him. You got a job, <laughs> you know." So uh, yeah, so there is times. There is times we do that, and in each case, it's different. Um, but yes, we we there we yeah. there can be time limits. It all sure. depends on yeah. the individual. Yeah. So Richard, I'm curious. After you left <clears throat> the first time, yeah, and. What was the trigger? How did you know that you had to go back? Um, well, <laughs> uh, I just I just kind of knew. Like I I lost everything. It's basically is the only way to put it. Like I you know like I I literally lost everything. And of course I never had much um, after you know 2015 because um, I kept getting like I, like I got in trouble when I got shot. When I when I got the the guy that I worked for, I had a, a a camper and a, like a truck and um, dogs the whole nine yards but it was all on his property I was renting the space from him so um, when I got in trouble he you know he he didn't want to have me back on the property so I essentially lost everything like he kept my camper my dogs my truck everything I never got it back so I just started all over and then it's the same story this time I got pulled over driving and I didn't have a license, and so I, I went to jail. And when I went to jail is what sent me into detox from the drugs that I was using and everything. And whenever I got out of jail, I had nowhere to go, so I came to the mission, and this time I decided to, like, surrender. And um, 
And one of the big things you're talking about here, and he's talking, he's he's actually telling you, but he's not using the word, is pride. Yeah. You know, as men, we have that pride. Right. We have that pride that we can do it ourselves. We can do it ourselves. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, and that's one of the things Richard, because Richard will tell you, I, I, when when the men come to me with that stuff, I tend to knock that <laughs> off their shoulder. I take the, I take that chip and I tend to knock it to the next room. When they sit with me and they say, and I'm like, really? You, you really? And, and so... He really struggled, with, but that's because if you listen to his story, he lost everything, and then he had to build it back. Listen to what he's saying. He had to build it back up, and then he lost it again. And then he had to build it back up. This time he's realizing that um, it's it's um, it's an effort of everybody, and the good Lord is uh, providing him the ability now to build it up without taking this whole stress on himself to do it. Right. You know, and that helps a lot. Yeah. Pastor Tim, I have 30 seconds left. Tell people how they can make donations to the mission. Sure, they make donations to go to MartinsburgUnionRescueMission.com. Hit the donate button to help out guys like Richard and women and children. And God bless you guys, and uh, happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you until then. Thanksgiving's oh, coming up, and uh, good close. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a good And happy Veterans Day to the vets out there, and uh, appreciate your service, and God bless you all. Thank you, Tim. Richard, yeah. all Thank the best you to you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah. you Thank telling you, your story. Yeah.